Without Kyrie Irving, this team has deficiencies. As good as James Harden is, as good of a point guard he was with the Rockets, he doesn't have the talent that Kyrie Irving brings to the table. Now, we don't know if Kyrie Irving's going to play this year. Some people say he's going to sit the whole season to prove a point. If he does that, he's going to lose tens of millions of dollars. It doesn't make sense. I do believe one way or another Kyrie Irving sometime this season. I don't know if he's going to get the vaccination, but I do believe he's playing basketball this year. If it's not for the Nets, it'll be for somebody else. But you heard Kevin Durant. He says we can't win without him. I think James Harden believes the same. This team is old. This is a veteran team, and they don't rebound very well. Now, bringing Kyrie Irving in, I don't know if he's going to rebound. <laughs> he's not a big man. That's but, true. Patty Mills is probably an upgrade in that area. <laughs> but he's going to hit shots, which there won't be rebounds. And that's what they need. They need a guy that can close. Now, they have one in Kevin Durant, but when teams are double teaming him at the end of the game, is he going to really close? Milwaukee was double teaming him at the end of the game. They weren't giving him any shot at the end of the game to make. So with Kyrie Irving on the court, it gives you the opportunity to have that type of player that can close out a game. Now, James Harden, year after year with the Rockets, with OKC, and now with the Nets, he is not a guy that you can depend on on closing a game. He is a great player that can get to the line. He's a great player. When he gets hot, he can shoot the three. He could shoot the perimeter shot, but he is not a closer. Kyrie Irving is a closer. So against Milwaukee, the world champion, the team that they lost against in the Eastern Conference Finals, I thought they were going to come out a little bit stronger than they did. Milwaukee in the fourth quarter completely dominated the game. And when you watch the Nets and watch how old they are, and they are. Now, Kevin Durant didn't look old. James Harden didn't look old. But everybody else, except their young players, looked old. And the only time you saw the young players play was at the end of the fourth quarter. They're going to depend on veterans. And they're not a good rebounding team. So all these Net fans crying, they should be crying for Kyrie Irving to come back. The question is, is he going to come back? And does he want to come back? And he says he wants to come back with the Nets and he would retire. I don't believe that. But the Nets offered him a four-year, $188 million contract. They took it off the table. If I was Kyrie Irving, would I play? The answer is no. I tell the Nets, put that contract back on the table or I'm not playing. You want me to get this vaccination? I'll get the vaccination. I want $200 million in four years. Ooh. If you're going to put my life at risk and you're going to force me to do something I don't want to do, that's what I want. I've looked at Kyrie Irving completely different after that interview. I don't care what anybody said to us on the Sports Loud Mouths on the ticker that you posted up on YouTube. And people were attacking us saying that Kyrie Irving is a menace. And why is he a menace? He was told that he wasn't going to be forced to do something. And then at the end of the preseason, they said that he has two weeks to get the vaccination or you're not playing. He has every right. And he spoke up. He said his piece of what he's done in the past. He said his piece, what he's trying to do. He's trying to make a statement, not only for him and the people out there, but his family. So they need Kyrie Irving, Speedy. They definitely need Kyrie Irving for also helping out the other veteran players. Kyrie Irving is a playmaker. He's a great passer, great ball handler that creates space on the court. And there's definitely lost in this game. Patty Mills played well. He had 20 points in an emergency-type role, but Patty Mills is old. He's not the dynamic player Kyrie Irving is. He's more of the fundamentally sound point guard. And again, another aspect of that was definitely lost, especially with an older team that is going to go through injuries that's going to have not the same stamina as they used to. Obviously, Kevin Durant Durant carrying the team in the playoffs the way he did last year. He's been dealing with a lot of injury issues, being load managed a lot. James Harden is always up there leading the league or second to Russell Westbrook in usage rate when he handles the ball. So there was an element definitely missing. You're right. Milwaukee definitely dominated the entire fourth quarter, just double teaming Durant and containing him and making other guys shoot. And they just don't have that kind of firepower. They have the specialists in certain areas with veteran players. Blake Griffin's a good inside guy. LaMarcus Aldridge is a good rebounder. Old. But, but they're all old and past their prime. They're going to have problems throughout the they're season. They're going to have a lot of problems with that. They don't have the dynamic young players that will help out there. And the lack of depth really showed in that particular game when Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Patty Mills had 20-plus points, but that was it. Their next high score was 12 points by Nick Claxton. If Kyrie Irving doesn't play this year, the Nets are a 6 or 7 seed. I don't think they're any good. Kevin Durant's going to keep them in games. Kevin Durant's sure. a fantastic player. James Harden will have those games that you're like, wow, James Harden's awesome. But they don't have anything. And without Kyrie Irving, you get that trio 
on the court, and you have a guy that can bring the ball up, that can ball handle like him, and open up the field for all the other guys to score, it's going to be different. Kyrie Irving is a playmaker. James Harden is not. He'll have 10 or 11 assists, and that's what people are going to say. Triple, double, triple, double. Yeah, he will. He touches the ball 90% of the time with Houston. He's not going to do that with the Nets. Kyrie Irving is going to touch the ball less than Harden and still get the assist and the scoring that's going to put him on top. And that's why he's a top 10 player in this league. Now, as far as the Knicks are concerned, I love what Tom Thibodeau had to say at the end of the game. Tom Thibodeau was not happy with this Knicks team, especially what happened in the fourth quarter with three minutes left. Kemba Walker forgot to pass the ball. I don't know what the hell happened to him. He looked like a high school player figuring out what the point guard position is all about. (laughs) But the Knicks found a way. Evan Fournier had 32 points. Fantastic. When you look at Evan Fournier, he could be the biggest pickup for the Knicks in the offseason. He's the third option on this team. I could see that emerging where because of his shooting prowess, because he's, he's positioned versus Randall, R.J. Barrett, him. Yeah, I could see that emerging with this offensive start. He's a good sharpshooter, smart player. He has good range, long range NBA threes, too. That's what you, know, you pull up on occasion. He's a good shooter and a guy that's versatile, could play many spots in the lineup, and we've seen him be a great sixth man in the past, and now he's starting. He started at the two against the Celtics. He started at the two against the Magic, and he could even start at the three, too. But with the way the Knicks are rolling right now, I don't want to mess with anything. It's crazy. Crazy, and they still don't have Nerlens as well. And Robinson had 17 rebounds in the game. If Robinson can play like that and give the Knicks the blocking opportunity and the rebounding and can stay on the court, because they re signed Nerlens Noel. Nerlens Noel is under contract for the next three years. Right. Robinson's going to be looking for that contract in the offseason. I do believe the Knicks are going to give it to him. They're going to stick with these two big guys. Nerlens Noel is still fairly young. I think he's 27. And he could also be a four in certain rotations, too. And Robinson is young. He's 22, 23 years old and could turn out to be one of the best big men in the league if sure. he can stay healthy. He's got to work on his shot. In the offseason, he's been doing that. And the Knicks are going to be a good three-point shooting team because Fournier could shoot, Kemba could shoot, Randall could shoot, Barrett somewhat could shoot, and then have Quigley and Obi Toppin. This team has a lot of depth. And by the way, Derek Rose. Toppin's looked really good so far. Yes, too. he so. has. And slowly but surely, he's going to move himself into that starting lineup. He was playing a lot with Randall the other game. Against the Celtics. the Celtics, he was playing a very good game. And in the fourth quarter, who was he playing with? Julius Randall. And everybody said they were not going to play small. That's not Tom Thibodeau's game. He likes to have a big out there. He did not. And we're going to see a lot of that because I think Julius Randle and Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin's the future. Julius Randle got his four-year deal, and the Knicks gave him his extension. He's going to be here for a while. But Obi Toppin, four years from now, he's 27 years old. He is the future. The Knicks are going to decide when Julius Randle's 30 years old if they're going to extend him. He wants to be a Knick for life, so maybe they do. But it'll be Obi Toppin's team eventually. Yeah, and this is what the wing depth does with the Knicks rotation now. They didn't have this kind of depth in terms of the offensive prowess last year where they can afford to have Toppin play at the five and be in good rotation with that because Toppin is a good offensive player inside. His defense is getting better. It's not his strong suit, but getting better for sure. And it allows the Knicks now to have all these position versatile guys. And that's the wave of the NBA now where you have shooting guards that can also be small forwards, small forwards that can also be power forwards, etc. The Knicks now have that kind of depth with different types of players that will enable them to do that. And the Knicks offense has definitely elevated their game too, where they're not only efficient, they're also shooting in volume too. Against the Magic, they had six different guys with a three-pointer in the second quarter. Against the Celtics, they had many 20-point plus scores. Obviously, the game going overtime helped with that, but they have a balance. They have a good sense of depth. And Fournier being the biggest one so far with 32 points in that game, six rebounds three assists shows how well-rounded he is too and can also take pressure off of guys like RJ Barrett who seemed like at times he had to do everything and ends up forcing it as a result and same thing with Randall. I have a question for you. Go for it. And this is a good question. This is a trivia question. Who was the Nick that scored the most points as a first-time Nick that Evan Fournier beat? That is a good question. Because hmm. Evan Fournier, for in his first Nick game, scored more points as a Nick in his first game than any Nick player in history. I will guess Stephon Marbury. Nope. I'll give you one more guess. Amari Sotomayor? Keith Van Horn. Wow. Okay. No, I wouldn't have thought Keith that. Van Horn. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And Evan Fournier in his first game beat out all of them. And the Knicks have been around forever. I thought there was a lot to choose from. I was not expecting Keith Van Horn. <laughs> Evan Fournier had a great first game. I think he's going to be a big part. If he could stay healthy, which he had problems last year staying healthy. Yeah. But if he could stay healthy this year, Evan Fournier is going to be a big part of this team. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Knicks are not going to be the same fourth-place team that they were last year. 
even if they land in fourth place or third place, nobody's going to want to play the Knicks because of their depth. And I don't think the Knicks are done. I think at the trade deadline, if the Knicks believe that they're a player away from being a contender, I could see Rose making a trade and bringing in a superstar to come and play with this team. The other thing I like about Fournier, the way he started too, remember how slow he started with the Celtics and kind of got out of the rotation as a result when he got traded over there last year. He's starting off fast with the Knicks, which is good for an adjustment process. And remember, the Knicks have the Charlotte Hornets first round draft pick next year. So that is a sale. If they want to bring a superstar player, they could put pieces together and that first round draft pick to get the player that they want to come and play with Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, Evan Fournier, and all the different players that they have. They might have to trade Toppin, but to get a superstar like a Damian Lillard, it might be worth it. The Knicks are positioned very well, and they could go up 3-0 before a blink of an eye. Could you imagine that the Knicks 3-0 and lead the Atlantic Division? When was the last time we saw the Knicks in first place in the Atlantic Division undefeated? That weird, like, fluky 2017 season. They had the great first month, and they won, like, 12 games the rest of the year or something like that.